Plava Cairns, near Inverness in Inverness Shire, Scotland. Bal Nurin of Clava is one of the best prehistoric sites in Scotland. Situated 6 miles east of Inverness and 275 metres east of Culloden Battlefield, the cairns are in the care of Historic Environment Scotland and signposted from the B9091 road. Situated on a terrace surrounded by trees, the cairns were built in the Bronze Age, 2000 BC. The site gives us a fascinating look back into deep antiquity. By studying the cairns, we can understand some of our ancestors' thinking. Roughly 50 clava cairns are in the Marae Firth area. These structures were placed very carefully and are testament to the multi-skills of our ancestors. Balneurin has four constructions, the North East Passage Grave, the Central Ring Cairn, a Small Kerb Cairn and a South West Passage Grave. The three large sites are well preserved and are surrounded by standing stones. If you look closely, some of the stones have cut marks. These stones may have originally been part of an earlier site then reused. It is thought the cairns were constructed as tombs for the dead. The cairns feature in Gary Balcliffe and Caroline Hoare's book, The Spine of Albion. The book follows an alignment from South England to North Scotland. The alignment is intertwined by male and female dragon lines. The male current goes through the three cairns and is met by the female current in the northeast cairn. The Northeast Passage Grave. Originally, the Northeast Cairn Passage was roofed by lintels. The passage was low, an adult would have to crouch to enter. The passage is aligned towards winter solstice sunset, the darkest day of the year. Rays of the dying sun illuminated the back of the womb tomb. The male and female dragon currents cross inside this chamber. Perhaps an ancient shaman could connect with other levels of reality and communicate with the ancestors. Was this the true function of the site? After a short period of stagnation, the cairn was blocked up and a circle of standing stones were added. These monoliths are graded in height, with the highest at the southwest entrance. A north arc red sandstone on the outer kerb has cut marks. The central ring cairn. The middle cairn is unusual as it has no passage. The first phase was a wall of rubble. A kerb supported the wall on both sides. The cairn had an open, circular central space. The two kerbs were graded in height. The highest kerb faced southwest. The smallest stones are towards northeast. Human bones and evidence of burning were found during excavation. The cairn stones were never high off the ground. This may have been a platform. When the site's use came to an end, the central section was filled in. A stone circle was erected, which is also graded in height. The Kerb Cairn, the smallest and youngest of the four rings. Compared with similar sites, the Kerb Cairn is thought to be 3,000 years old, making it 1,000 years after the Big Cairns. During this time, the sites were having a second phase of use. A 1950s excavation found pebbles of white quartz and pieces of flint. This 4 meter by 4 meter ring mirrors features from the other sites. The stones are high at the southwest, decreasing to the northeast. The boulders alternate in pink, white, and red. A red sandstone is covered in cup marks. One cup is surrounded by a ring. The Southwest Passage Grave. The Southwest Cairn is a near mirror image of the Northeast site. At the winter solstice sunset, the rays of the dying male solar disk penetrate the female womb tomb. The chamber is a mixture of red sandstone, white mica and quartz. The sun sets on the valley side. The site was only used for a short time, then intentionally closed. 
A stony bank was added with a ring of 10 red sandstone megaliths. There probably was originally 12. One of the monoliths has cup marks. An excavation took place in 1828. Not much is known about the human remains found. The site had a second lease of life for a number of cremation burials around 3,000 years ago. A modern wood separates the south arc of standing stones from the cairn. Some of the stones in the central chamber have cup marks and cup and ring glyphs. At the entrance of the passage is a tall slab with cup and ring mark carvings and cups. The meaning of these petroglyphs are long lost to us. Please subscribe for regular content. Feel free to share the videos, leave any comments, questions and suggestions. And thanks for watching. And a big thanks to our ancient ancestors.